We have the good fortune of being at the American Daffodil Society's National Convention here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've got my good friend of more than 20 hey, years. Please. We've been Brent Brent buddies for ages. Exactly, Brent Heath from Brent and Becky's Bulbs, uh, who is uh, a third generation uh, daffodil uh, enthusiast and expert. You have different divisions of daffodils that are entered into the show and different divisions of daffodils even in your catalog that people can buy. So We do and this is basically from nature, right? how they grow in the wild. Okay. Some are trumpet daffodils yeah. where this trumpet or corona is actually longer than these petals or variant segments right? and that makes that a trumpet daffodil. Right. Trumpet daffodils, and uh, and really all of these are everything we're going to talk about is a narcissus. That's right, all uh, technically botanically narcissus. speaking. Now, the good Lord initially tricked the flower a little bit. This had a corona, but he tricked it into filling in those pistil and stamens, the right. sexual parts, creating petaloids. So we call this a double daffodil. Right. So anywhere the center is filled with different petaloids, okay. it's a double daffodil. And in this case, if I'm not mistaken, these are completely contained inside of that. That's correct. And in some corona. cases, the double is just the whole thing is full of petaloids. Right. Almost looks like a camellia flower, if you will, or something like that. They've got some funny names. Somebody named this one Wave. Okay. Well, you know, there are 27 registers, 27,000 registered hybrids already. Wow. Or is it 17? I have something. Numbers are not great, but a lot. Yes. Hard to find a really new and different name to use, uh -huh. but this one is called Wave. Okay. Oh, one of my favorite groups. You see, I think fragrance is an added value. Well, and as that went by, as I passed that in front of me, you the fragrance smell. of that is unbelievable. And this one is a tazetta type daffodil. Okay. Tazetta meaning tiny cups in Italian. And you see, each stem has four, five, or six flowers on it. Right. And they have a kind of musky, sweet fragrance mm -hmm. about them. And this one called falconet. Okay. Now, one of the breeders, Named a lot of his after birds. After birds, um, all right. Great, great daffodil. Yeah. Now a Tazetta, if I'm not mistaken, something that everybody might recognize would be our paper white narcissus and, and at Christmas time. Yeah, the fragrance varies. So yes. with some paper white, some people love it. Other really people, musky. other people check the bottom of their shoes, see what the. <laughs> well, this is, is really perception. sweet and really pleasantly fragrant, I think. But in the car, too much of it gives me a headache. Exactly. Right. All right, so let's move on to another oh. one here. Now this one is a historic daffodil. Okay. Because it means it's over 50 years old. So I'm a historic Well, I'm, ge I'm getting there really quickly. <laughs> okay. This one's called Barrett Browning, All named right. for Elizabeth Barrett Browning. But the cup or corona is less than a third the length of this petal, so that makes it a small cup. A small cup. Or division three daffodil. Okay. Another nice oh. big one here. This one is one of our hybrids. Now, I was the bee that went around and spread pollen right. from one to another. If the right time of day, the pollen grains uh, grew back to the ovary back here behind mm -hmm. and found an ovule and connected and formed a seed in about six to eight weeks. Right. I planted it five to seven years later, so it bloomed for the first time. Right, so this, this is not a short process. It's not a, a it's a, it's a, it's a long, long term commitment. Process, yes. This one we named Fellows Favorite mm -hmm. for Fellows Riverside Park in Youngstown, Ohio. Okay. And they have a beautiful daffodil garden. Notice the white halo in this one. That really Isn't sets that off, you know, really just sets off the center of the flower so beautifully. And we like this one because it blooms early but lasts a long, a long time, time in bloom. We think that's an added value as well. All right. Now, some of these that we're getting into now are just a little bit smaller. We've, we've seen that Tazetta type with a smaller flower, and some of these others also. This just one a has little a character like, it's, uh, like the one that it's coming from called Triandrus. Mm -hmm. It hangs its head. Right. Now, it's, not, it's bashful, not in, it's not a shame. Right. It's just bashful. Right. Has a more fruit like fragrance, mm -hmm. and this particular one. Moonlight sensation has two sisters, sunlight and starlight sensation, okay. all coming from the same seed pod. But this one, last year, 
won the best daffodil in the show at the Philadelphia Flower Show last year. Very nice. So we're really very pleased, nice. but it's very prolific. So this one, each words. bulb produces four or five bloom stalks. Uh, Another sweet little thing here. This is a Jonquilla hybrid. Okay. Division seven. And this one is one of our babies. Right. It was bred from a big trumpet one with mm -hmm. a little Jonquilla right. as its papa. Yeah. Holland parent. And this one called Golden Echo. Look how the color radiates into the parent segment. Mm -hmm. One of the longest lasting in bloom. We have it lasting for a month or more. Wow. Now this one is incredibly unique, I think. Um, tell me about, I mean, the, uh, the whole flower lays back flat rather than having that central portion. Real so. daffodil fanciers yeah. think this is a, uh, hmm, but they call it a bastard daffodil, but I can't, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you'll edit that out. Right. But in any event, the corona splits back against the petals. It's called a split corona daffodil, uh -huh. division 11. That intense color comes from probably 20 crosses to get there, to intensify that color right. until this one is called Electris coming from a breeder in Ireland, and um, not and that, often a show winner, but pretty showy flower. But a, a really showy garden flower, a my really gosh. really showy, that catches I mean, your attention. You hardly ever see this really salmony orange color. And, and the salmony orange has the tendency to fade so often, mm -hmm. but it's stable in this one. Okay. It doesn't burn and in And I the think the fact that it lays out flat like that shows that color off Sand. even more. Look, it's, there I you am. Know, look here I me. am. Exactly. And another wonderful old-fashioned variety that I remember from my grandmother's garden and when I was a little boy. Historic. You know yeah. who Actea was? She was King Solomon's favorite concubine in okay. the Bible. She's in the Bible. Okay. But you see this little red rim here. Right. All the pink and the orange and the uh, all the pink and orange red pigment we've mm -hmm. seen in the others are all coming from the little red rim in these poeticus type daffodils, okay. Division Nine. They grow wild up in the Alps and in the Pyrenees. Sure. And uh, this Actea is a lovely, lovely one. It has a spice-like fragrance, which is interesting. Another one to me that is just so unique because it's got that incredibly long trumpet in the center and its petals are so swept back. Very dramatic looking, even though the flower is small. Now I call this a cyclaminous type daffodil. Mm -hmm. Some people call it a cyclaminous type right. daffodil. But like the cyclamen flower, the perianth segments flare back. Mm -hmm. This one Rapture wins more blue ribbons than any other daffodil. Really? Yeah, it's one more blue ribbon. Well, it's it really oh. is quite something. Very, coming, very coming unique. Coming from looking. one of my mentors in 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 Oregon, a wonderful gentleman named Grant Mitch. All right, and Grant Mitch was a very prolific hybridizer for many many years. He was indeed. And finally, some of my personal favorites are these little really tiny miniatures and I think they fascinate me personally just because they're so perfect in every way but so tiny. And they are and they, yeah. they're just really nice for small spaces Yeah. and often modern gardens are smaller spaces. This one got the name Tiny Bubbles because mm -hmm. can you sing the song? No. <laughs> I, I but. can't sing worth a hoot but it's a great little one. Now this is a hybrid between a Cyclamenius and a Jonquilla. Okay. So it, in effect, is actually in Division 12. Okay. So there are none others other, like the this. The other division. Yes, it is. <laughs> Where it Indeed. doesn't fit. All right. And we have one more vase full of flowers here that I think it's important to, to address and talk about. Well, we like to trial everything that we put in the catalog mm -hmm. before we actually put it in. We want it to grow well. Right. And uh, these are all new hybrids, um, some from us, mm -hmm. some from a friend who will be lecturing here tomorrow night, Franz okay. Vohl. Yeah. He's quite prolific with his hybridizing, and he likes really big ones. So this one will replace one called Fortissimo, mm -hmm. but it's it's very perfect in form. Right. This um, this is a new color here. 
that yellow but with a pink rim. Right. So not yet, it just has a number. Mm -hmm. So not a name yet. Yeah, so, no name on any yeah. of these yet. Just yeah. uh, uh, under evaluation. And look at this pink double. You see another double, but right. totally filled with petaloids and right. great color and standing up strong. Sure. Um, Just all different kinds of forms. A, a little small multi-flowered double that's here. That's one of our hybrids. And Exceptionally very ruffled yeah, on, they, the, they, on the cut. Uh, the proposed name is CRISPA for that one. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating forms. I mean, just, I, I think so many of us, when we hear the, the word daffodil, we have one image that comes to mind, and that's fields full of yellow daffodils in bloom. But they really Once come in every form, so many colors, so many shapes, fragrant ones. Um, I think there's a daffodil for every garden, isn't there? In every season, and every reason. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, Brent Heath, thank you so much for taking a little time to thank address you for coming us here, and, Troy. And, and informing us and teaching us about daffodils. I can't think of anybody better to do it. Well, come visit our garden someday. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.